former Fed governor. Very Jimmy former. Stein. Yeah. Very former. Um, give me your thoughts right off the bat on whether or not you think the Fed mm -hmm. can bring inflation back down to 2.0%. Yeah, I think that may be challenging. So obviously, I, I should preface it by saying we're in a pretty amazing place. I mean, if you think back to where we were a year ago, it's unfathomable that we'd be where we are. Um, you know, in my, terms of inflation being inflation as low. Inflation being this low and the labor market still being basically great. Nobody here was predicting that last year. Exactly. So that, you know, the, 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 the context for this has to be whether by luck or by skill, they've done an amazing job. Okay. You know? now, my best guess is inflation right now underlying is tracking high twos, 2.8. We saw the core PCE was 2.8. I don't know that it is going to want to voluntarily fall much further of its own accord. You know, it's come back a lot in part because of the supply chain stuff reversing itself. You know, the models that they use have a bit of a, a magic effect where if you say two, it just drops to two. I don't really buy that so, so you much. So you think the sort of what sort of cut its losses now and reverse policy or no, what would be i, I, I the think best, i think it, it depends here. a little on the context right now we've got a strong the 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 labor market is strong output growth is strong i'd be inclined to just be a little bit patient and wait a couple of meetings if you start to and so in that sense they can be pursuing the goal of getting inflation down a little bit further i'm not against them doing that right it's if the, the trade-off starts to bite, in other words, you see the economy weakening, then obviously you're going to, you know, now they're, they're at the point where they have to be balancing both legs of the mandate. There is a big debate going on, which you just addressed in the luncheon here, about mm -hmm. what the neutral rate is. And right. people don't need to get too excited about the neutral rate. It just means what's normal, right? right? Where would the Fed put the interest rate right now if it was not trying to accelerate or decelerate the economy? Right. The Fed seems to say that long run rate is 2.5%. Does that seem right to you? That seems low. So we're talking about two and a low. half. That's if it's two and a half percent nominal. Right. That seems low. I think actually where the market is right now. So if you look at like the two-year T bill, right. which is a reasonable proxy for sort of the path of, sure. uh, of monetary policy, that's in the fours. That strikes me as pretty reasonable. Um, I think we're in a different economy than we were in the years what leading makes up to the. What it different, period. Jeremy? I think so. Some of it, you know, you can point to some fundamental factors. Debt to, you know, government spending, all that puts pressure on savings. Right. Um, and I think some of it is just the path that we've taken. So we took a path through high inflation, and I think that has more inertia sometimes than we give it credit for. So, you know, inflation was stubbornly kind of in the ones, Low one point five. Right. And I think that has some self fulfilling history dependence to it. We've been through a period now where it's been high. People's expectations for it going forward may be a little bit higher. And that tends to make it settle in at a higher level. All so what you're saying to investors out there, which mm -hmm. is we're not clicking our heels and going back to Kansas of 2 percent inflation so. or sub 2 percent inflation. I'd argue with you the following way with, without mm -hmm. conviction, yeah. which is um, what about all those forces, the global forces, the things, the excess savings mm -hmm. glut, the things that cause us to believe we'd be in a sub 2 percent inflation world? Have those gone away in the pandemic? Many of them remain. Uh -huh. I think we may have overfit the stories. In other words, we definitely had low rates. Right. Was it really because of the savings glut? Was it really because of something else? Those were stories that worked really well after the fact. <laughs> I'm a little less sure that that was the reason. And some of it, I think, especially in the 10 years leading up to the pandemic, was we had low rates because we had low rates. I think there is an extent to which the economy gets a little bit addicted to low rates. And so... You know, if the Fed keeps rates low for a long time, they bring forward a lot of consumption. Right. Everybody buys a new car and a new refrigerator. And then you have to kind of keep rates low to keep things going. So our star was definitely low. Right. But I'm not so sure that a simple it's this demographic thing or that demographic thing is the Jeremy, last question. We're, we're kind of out of time here. But should the Fed be so quick next time? And hopefully there is never a next time, but there always will yeah. be to go to zero and do QE again, or do those things look like, at the end of the day, they were more trouble than they're worth because of how difficult it is to exit? I think they will have to go, you know, if the economy is really suffering, it's their job. And right. if you they sit in the chair, right. they have to certainly go low with rates. I think the last round of QE, in retrospect, doesn't look very good. I think more was done relative to sort of the efficacy of it. 
And you know, because rates went up, they end up losing a lot of money on that, and that's a real cost to taxpayers. So I think they'll have to be more prudent. I, would I rule out doing it at all? Under, no. But less likely, you think? I would be a little around. more ginger, I think. Okay.